Shalom Aleichem, a good night of Shabbos to everyone. It's Parshas Noyach. The Rebbe says in the Siche, Parshas Noyach is a Kalamutne Voch. Parshas Noyach is a kind of a um, sad, depressing, melancholy week. There's the flood, the Mabel. Never the, however, the next parsha, Lech Lecha, Yeder Tog, Lepnim et Avram Avinu. Each day we live with Avram Avinu. The truth is that the reason why HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave us this parsha's Noyach is as the Alter Rebbe says in Teir in this week's parsha, it's because the May Mabel, the waters of the flood, represent the, the Tahara, the purification. The world needs purification, it got its purification. We somehow needed some purification, and Hashem sent us a COVID. We, do, we don't understand why. We shouldn't want to understand why. We should just know that we need to take whatever Hashem gives us, and indeed it comes from God Almighty, and to transform it, just as the Yidin, the Jews, has um, transformed all of their tzaras, their difficulties throughout history. And in this vein, I talk about today a little bit about Ramosha Feinstein again, revisiting some Ramosha Feinstein. And in 1942, I believe I shared with you that he was asked by the Frida Kerebe and the Shmuel Witten and Rabbi Saul Jacobson and Rabbi Garari, the Rashag, of course, to be the Rosh Hashiva in 770. Recently, uh, I uh, shared a video that I, a video that I had in the, in the, in the archive from Rabbi Gr uh, Grumblatt uh, of Memphis, Tennessee, who was a student at Teferes Yerushalayim, Rabbi Moshe's yeshiva at the time, and he remembered clearly the daily visits that Rabbi Moshe's brother-in-law, Rabbi Reuven Levovitz, visited him, discouraging him from taking the position. Why that is, Rabbi Grumblatt said, it was uh, politics, and what he didn't say, but someone else told me, it was, he was a litvisher misnagid. Let's call a spade a spade. And he didn't want to give such a valuable tired a yid, like Ramosha, such a modest Pesachadoyer Jew to Lubavitch. And he drove him nuts every day. This is what uh, the Grunblatt said. He would, he would see him sitting there and talking to him and making with his hands... So Grunblatt convinced Reb Moshe's Rebetzin, his wife, his sister, and she told Reb Moshe, Zivilis nisht. And in those days, uh, you know, Parnosa was very difficult, and he still was considered a greenhorn, you know, although he came, you know, in the late 30s, he still, you know, was adjusting himself. And uh, as the vibe will, you know, what do we say? Minoshim vad neifach. Right? The Jews camped in one place called Noshim and another place called Neufach. So the Noshim vad Neufach. So there's a Chsidish Taich, a Veltish, a Veltish Taich. Vernish fa Weibert bis Ibern der Noz. In English, don't become womanized over your nose. And I don't mean womanized in a negative, uh, disgusting sense. I mean, womanized as far as even with your own wife, that she leads you over your nose, she directs you, and whatever it is. Shma Bekaila, listen to her voice, hearken to her voice. Which, of course, we know that Rebbe told many people who wanted to travel here or there or move here and there that Rebbe said, What does your wife say? Check with your wife, do with what your wife says. So I'm not discounting that. But at the same time, there's a time when the, the husband is the Mashpia and he uh, should be giving the Ashpa and leading the wife and being Megala, revealing in the wife that what's really good. Aisha's. Chaya Lateras Baila, that Mashiach will come, she will be the crown of her husband, meaning the wife is Megala, the wife reveals that the, that the, that, that the wife is the crown. But it, who's revealing it? The husband's revealing it. Well, Moshe, for whatever reason, I guess did not reveal it, and because of his wife and his brother-in-law, <coughs> according to Rabbi Grunblatt, he never took the position of being the actual Hashiva. They say that when Rabbi Gusman took the position in 1946, Rabbi Yisrael Gusman, who was the youngest dying, and Rabbi Chaim Moiser Grudensky's best in Vilna, 
he, um, Reb, uh, Reb Moshe, there was a dispute, uh, Machlaikis, Reb Moshe said he should take the job. He asked Reb Moshe, and he asked Reb Aaron Kotler, Reb Aaron said, no, this is what I heard. I have no verification for this, but this is what I heard. And uh, Reb Moshe said, take the job. Lepoil, in actuality, he took the job, he became the Rosh Hashiva, and uh, the Bacharim benefited for four years until he left and opened his own yeshiva. And there's a lot more about that, and I've written extensively about that in various uh, books of mine. Another story with Reb Moshe happened in 1980, actually. The Reb at the time had encouraged what, we, what was called at the time the, the, sif, the, sefer, the Sifri Torah for Yaldi Yisrael, that every Jewish child should have an ois, should have a letter in a Sefer Torah that represents all of Yisrael, all of Israel. And this way, there'll be unity, everyone together. And I believe there was like a dollar for a letter and uh, everyone, not just Shluchim, but every Lubavitcher tried getting, uh, you know, as many people to sign up. By the way, when the Friede Kerebbe made the, the Mashiach Sefer Torah in the, in the 40s, we have a, uh, a receipt that the Chazayin Ish of Nebrak, who was a Litvak, a Mesnaget, there's a receipt that he gave, uh, he gave a, uh, whatever the equivalent in Eretz Yisrael money was, to buy a letter for, for himself for the Sefer Torah. The Chazayin Ish in the 1940s. So here, Rabbi Avram Shmuel Levin was a secretary for the Agudas Rabbonim of which Rabbi Moshe was the president. The Agudas Rabbonim organization. And he had a lot of ex encounters with Rabbi Moshe and he was close to Rabbi Moshe to the point in 1974 when he married at 770, Rabbi Moshe came and officiated. And that's when Rabbi Moshe had an hour Yechidus with the Rebbe. I wrote about this extensively as well and told you a little bit about it. But going back to 1980, so before he left, Abram Shmuel left Eretz Yisrael. He went to he live in Eretz Yisrael. So he went to say goodbye to his, uh, to his uh, employer, Rabbi Moshe. So Rabbi Moshe told him, here's $72, give it to Rabbi Nochem Trebnik, the Mored Asre of Kfar Chabad, before Rabbi Ashkenazi, Rabbi Motla Ashkenazi took over, who, who the, 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 the Rav of Kfar Chabad was Rabbi Nochem Trebnik, who also was the Rosh Hashiva of Tayyim Chet Mimim in Kfar Chabad, with Lubavitch Yeshiva. Reb Moishas Chavrusa in Europe, before the war in the Yeshiva, was Reb Shimon Trebnik, Reb Nochem's brother, and they were like best friends. Subsequently, Reb Nochem became a very good, fr was also a good friend of Reb Moishas, yet from Europe. Each year when Reb Nochem would come to America for Tishrei, of each year, many of the years, whenever he came, he went to visit and spent time with Reb Moshe. They were very good friends. This year, the, the, the Tishrei, the Tishrei of Tafshin Mem, Reb Nochem, I believe, told, the, told Reb Moshe about the, the Rebbe's campaign for the, the, the Sifrei Torah for Yaldi Yisrael, that every Jewish child, and he suggested that Reb Moshe sign up his family his grandchildren, great-grandchildren, etc. And um, he didn't say anything, and, it, and nothing happened at the time, because he just heard about it from, from he didn't know nothing about it, he heard about it from Reb Nochem. But now that Reb Avram Shmuel, his, his, his former secretary, was going to Eretz Yisrael, he called him in, he told him, he, he told him, here's $72, give it to Reb Nochem Trebnik, and he, had a, and he gave him a paper with all the names of the, 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 his family, ch the children in his family, for each one on ice in the Sefer Torah, a letter in the Sefer Torah. And what we see from this is a, a tremendous thing. You don't need to be a Chassid. You don't need to be a Masnagid. You don't need to be a Sfarjashid. You don't need to be an Ufkeklerter. When there's something good that a Tzadik, a Manik suggests, if it's taka good and important and it's a dover it's a positive action, do it. 
Don't question and change and challenge. Is it my minig? Is it not my minig? You know, I'm sure that this wasn't the Messiah, the tradition that Moshe that the Rabbi Moshe had from his ancestors to, you know, to, 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 to write letters in a Sefer Torah for Jewish children. I mean, there's a mitzvah of writing a Sefer Torah. The mitzvah of, of, of some say it can be to the mitzvah with buying svarim, of course, and people write Sefer Torah for loved ones and uh, etc. That's, that's it's a mitzvah in the Torah. But this idea of uniting all the children together, a dollar per letter, it's, 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 a, it's something new, it's a chiddush. And Chassam Sefer says, Chodesh Hashem and Atever, something new is forbidden. We don't, we don't look to do new things. The reformers did new things. Ramesh didn't feel this way about the Sifri Torah. Ramesh's respect for the Rebbe, this is very important, that the Rebbe is a tzaddik, and he writes it in, in, the, in his Sefer, in his Svarim that he gave as a gift. The Stern brothers told me, they live here in Borough Park, they told me that they were the ones who delivered the Svarim from Ramesha to Merkis to give to the Rebbe because they were they lived in the Lower East Side and they were very close to Ramesha. And they happened to open up and they saw the what he wrote there and it's in the library today. Besides, you know, Ravagoin and the Nisiya and with the and he writes he he either writes clearly Nisi or Nasi, he uses the word Nasi in some context. I don't have the Lush right in front of me. But that's not I'm not, you know, going that direction. You know, he believed he was a Nasi. He didn't believe he was a Nasi. That's not the respect that the Rebbe had for Rabbi Moshe and Rabbi Moshe had for the Rebbe was enormous and something that is left with us today. We consider Rabbi Moshe the place of God, we consider the Rebbe the Nasi Adair. So now every Yid should learn Igris Moshe, should learn the Rebbe Sichas and the Igris and know that it's one Yiddish kite. You have a gartel, you don't have a gartel. You have a beard, you don't have a beard. You wear a hat, you don't wear a hat. If you want to be a chassid, you want to be a Lubavitcher, they have their guidelines. We have our guidelines. You want to be a Litvisher, they have their guidelines. Oh, but there are things that we share in common, so they should help. As we, we go through the Shabbos, Shabbos, Noyach, and the al Rebbe also speaks about the Mayim Rabim, the, the abundant waters of Tirdus Aparnona, the uh, Parnosa, the famous Maimer in 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 Teirahir, right? Maim Rabim. It's an opportunity. I'm telling you, Chevra, this week, your investments will grow, your bank account will grow, your Avoid Ruchnis will grow, and we'll be safe to have Giulish Shlema with good health. Everyone should be healed, Begashmias. Freilach begashmish, and we should be zeicher to be as Mashiach tzitkenu bekarev mamish amen v'amen agot ne'erev Shabbos.